Okay, we're ready to start turn number nine of the Legend of Drizzt board game adventure number one. So in the last turn, we used our Cloud of Darkness to prevent the Hunting Drake from activating. Probably not the greatest use of that card, but I remembered that I had it finally, so that's why I used it. So we'll start off this turn. Hmm, you know, now I'm actually regretting doing that. I think I'm regretting doing that. Yeah, because if I... Because now I have to move adjacent to... Now I have to use my move action to move adjacent to the Drake, which means I can't explore. Boy, that was dumb. I'm not going to take it back, though, because that's what I did. Let's see if there's anything we can do. Uh, well, we I think we have something that we can throw at it to deal damage, possibly. So use this instead of attacking. Choose a tile within... Uh, to choose it one tile away. Okay, so that's a... F so we would need to roll a 10 to hit and kill it. I think we might do that. Uh, op op alternatively, we could use that, but that is not a good use. Our stance is already used, so we can't do that. That's the way I read that. Because we don't have multiple stance tokens. We only have the one. So at the start, use at the start, place your, unless unless somehow we could, I don't think we can move our stance token. I read it to mean that this token is stuck on this card until it can be removed. You can, yeah, you can remove your stance token from this card when an adjacent monster hits your hero. So I take it to mean that that stance token is stuck to that card which means that this can't be used until the stance token is available. That makes sense to me. So I think what we'll do, we will try to throw the flask of oil at the drake, and if we hit it, we kill it, and then we can still use our move action to find an unexplored edge. So let's give that a try. So we're going to flask of oil the hunting drake. We need to roll a 10 or better. And, of course, we miss. All right. Well, we can still move. So, all right, let's update our sheets. So we didn't use a healing surge. We have not moved yet. We did use our attack action, although we missed. So we don't get a treasure card. Actually, though, you know what? Drist has two attacks. You can make an additional attack. So let me see here. Using, so I, get, I take it that we used one of these flasks and we just burned it. You know, it just was wasted, essentially. So we're going to use our other attack to try again with the other flask of oil. And we got a seven again. Man, I am so unlucky on my rolls. So we've wasted both of our flasks of oil, but that's the way it goes. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and move, and our speed is 7, I believe. Yeah, our speed is 7, so we can you know, we can go pretty far, actually. So what is this uh, hunting drake? Maybe we should move away from it. It can move two tiles, so it can move pretty far. So, let's see. Where does seven take us? Maybe if we can move a couple tiles away from it, we can at least, you know, not get attacked by it this turn. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we move over here, we're two tiles away and we're on an unexplored edge. So let's do that. So we're going to move diagonal one, diagonal two, diagonal three, and then four, five, and I don't think we can go diagonal here, but it doesn't matter because we can still go six, seven. But I don't think we can go here to here because um, tile to tile diagonally, I don't think we can do that. So we'll move over here. We're on an unexplored edge. So we are exploring and we're going to draw a tile. So this is, after this tile, we need four more. 
So we got a volcanic vent. So that one uh, encounter we drew would uh, would do damage if we were within one of the volcanic vent. So we want to keep that in mind. We probably want to get away from that volcanic vent. But now we're going to draw a monster. And we get a goblin cutter. So that must be this one. Yeah, that looks like what's on the card. So we place the goblin cutter on the mushroom pile. And update our sheet. So we drew a black triangle. And we drew a goblin cutter. There's no conditions. There's n We will have an encounter. There's no villain. Then we will have the hunting drake and then the goblin cutter. All right, so let's go to the encounter, see what we get. We cannot cancel this, so we take whatever it is. It's a, spy, a spell web. Attack each hero on your hero's tile. If it hits, we're immobilized. Okay, so it gets a plus eight. And, wow, of course it hits with a perfect 20. So it doesn't do any damage, but it does immobilize this. So I have all those in the bag. I didn't take them out, so I'll stick the whole bag right there just to remember. And then the hunting drake will activate. And if it's within one tile, and it's not, so it's one, two, three, it's like four tiles away. One, two, three, yeah, either way you go, four tiles away. So otherwise, it's going to move two tiles closer. So it will move mushroom stack to mushroom stack. And then we'll have it move down here. And then the goblin cutter will activate. If it's within one tile of a hero, and it is, it'll move adjacent to the closest hero and attack with the crude dagger. So we'll say it moves, it's going to move to our tile, and it's going to move, so we'll say here, and attack with the crude dagger. And it gets plus seven on that attack, and if it hits, it does one damage, All right? So we're going to roll for the goblin cutter. And of course, rolling for monsters, I always roll high. I don't even think that's confirmation bias. I think that's just an objective fact. So it hits and it does one damage. So we're going to go down to two hit points. All right, well, I already know what I'm doing at the start of my next turn. But that will end the villain phase for turn number nine.